Ah, Mario. That lovable plumber from the Mushroom Kingdom. He's done it all. We've seen him smash, serve, drive, drive again, practice medicine, play volleyball, play hockey, play dodgeball, and play basketball in the same game. And yes, we've seen him party. Many, many times. But which of these parties was the best party? Well, I played every main Mario Party game in the series, and I have ranked them from worst to best. That means I played this one, those ones, that one, these ones, this one, and yes, those two. So let's find out how they scored. Quick note, if you didn't notice, I will only be rating the console versions of the Mario Party series, meaning that Advanced, DS, and Island Tour won't be in it. If you really want to know though, DS rocked, Island Tour was meh, and Advanced was a pile of shit. Alright, let's party! Number 10. Where do I begin with Mario Party 9? There is just so much that's wrong with this game. Mario Party 9 was the first in the series to try something different, which is great considering how familiar the game has become over the years, but it was changed so far to the point that they essentially revised the entire premise of what Mario Party is. If you haven't played the series in a few years, the new structure sits the four players in a vehicle of some sort, a car, a plane, whatever the fuck this is, and makes them continuously move forward on a set path. There is no longer coins or stars to be collected, but instead mini stars, which are rewarded through mini games and whoever is driving the vehicle at the time. This means that getting mini stars and winning the game in the end is heavily based on luck. And although luck has always been a big factor in Mario Party, it's never been so bad to the point where it means you win or lose a game. There are also boss battles that were added in this iteration that are actually a lot of fun, but getting to play them is rare since you'll only ever see two of them during a single party mode. I believe what they were thinking when they made this version of the franchise was, how do we make Mario Party become less of a star-stealing, friend-hating, Luigi-fucking-with-everyone type of competitive game, and more of a cooperative one? But in doing this, it fundamentally breaks the basic structure of Mario Party. The game is made to be competitive, but that's not even the end of it. The best thing about Mario Party is obviously the minigames, and in every other game in the series, you get to play one after everyone has rolled the die and taken their turn. But in this version, getting to play a minigame is now determined by a space on the board. You could very well play an entire half an hour game of Mario Party and never get to play a minigame! And this is why Mario Party 9 is the worst on this list of games. Number 9 Mario Party 8. This was the first game on the Wii, and because of that, it held a lot of potential, but it ultimately fell short. This game really left me feeling unsatisfied after I bought it back in 2007. The maps were hit or miss. Some were okay, but others like Goomba's Booty Boardwalk were so dull and tedious. It was literally a straight line. The mini games in this one also have to be some of the worst as well, and pretty much all of them use motion controls in some way or another. Whether it was flicking the Wii Remote, twirling it, or jacking it off, there's no getting away from it. You can't even pick your character without raising your hand up to the screen. It's so annoying. I'm playing video games, dammit, I don't want to be active. I don't even know why, there's also this shitty copy-paste version of Wii Sports that made into the game, but somehow it's way worse. It's impossible to tell where the ball is going to go, it just does what it wants. The game just feels so bland and empty, and I really hate having to do this motion bullshit literally every second. Seriously, you can't even use A to hit the dice block, you have to flick the controller on every single turn. You suck, Mario Party 8. Number 8. Much like Mario Party 7, Mario Party 5 didn't do a lot to bring anything new to the series. It pretty much just crammed in as many modes into the game as it possibly could. Volleyball? I thought this was Mario Party. Hockey? What is this, a card game? What the fuck is this shit? Anyway, the game itself was pretty basic, but with a new gimmick. Capsules. Nothing too special. The maps were pretty decent, but not very memorable, and most of the minigames were actually really good, although there were some that were just plain ridiculous. Especially this one. Alright, so all I have to do is jump, I guess? Oh, okay. Alright, second attempt, here we go. Holy crap! Okay, third time's a charm. What the fuck?! This minigame is pretty much impossible to win if you're one of the three on the panels. Honestly, I don't think I've ever seen what's at the bottom of the screen. But I digress. Let's get into the, some of the side modes that I mentioned. In the extra section of the game, there actually is a mode with volleyball hockey in this card game. They're all okay for a bit, but pretty pointless additions to the game. And then there's this mode, where you get to make a robot then battle with other robots. I don't know who in Nintendo was like, hey guys, you know what Mario Party needs more of? Robots fighting other robots, because that's what Mario Party is about. Once again, it's fun for a little while, but still kind of pointless. This was a mediocre Mario Party at best. On to the next one. Number 7 Mario Party 10 suffers from much of what the 9th did wrong without fixing many of the issues. It once again keeps the everyone moves together gameplay of the 9th and doesn't add all that much otherwise. 
There's a new mode called Bowser Party that allows a fifth player to join the game as Bowser using the gamepad. In this mode, the team of four all roll their dice at once trying to move the car away from Bowser. Then, Bowser rolls his four dice, hoping to roll a higher number so that he can catch them. If he catches them, then a Bowser minigame begins and he has the chance to take away their health points. The mode is actually really fun, but it seems to heavily favor the player who is Bowser. Dad, you can't catch up to them on a roll like that, I'm gonna let you re-roll that one? How is that fair? There's also a third mode called Amiibo Party that seems to be a watered-down version of the original games, complete with stars, coins, red and blue spaces, etc. The maps in this mode are limited to whatever Amiibo you may have, so if you own a Yoshi Amiibo and you want to play on Rosalina's board, you can't. You need to go out and buy a Rosalina Amiibo, if you can even find one. This mode seems incredibly pointless, more of an excuse to make the player go out and buy Nintendo's figurines if you didn't get it bundled with the game. As without them, the mode isn't even playable. Although I'm bashing it quite a bit, this version of the game is actually one of the better Mario parties in recent years. It's the prettiest looking in the series to date, and bonus points for being the first game to feature Donkey Kong as a playable character since the fourth, as he was one of the original six characters. When you do get to play them, the minigames are pretty damn good, especially the Bowser ones. But the problem with Mario Party 10 is, much like the 9th, it's still too far from the original games. There's no room for strategy anymore. You can win every mini-game, you still come in last place because of bad luck. And one final note, why is there no online multiplayer by this point? Number 6 Mario Party 7 was actually not a bad game, but something about it felt so lackluster, like it was missing something. The intro to the game just seems so half-assed, I cringe every time I watch it. Mario here gets invited on a cruise for him and his friends, and that's pretty much it. They're the kings of the world? Oh god, somebody actually wrote this down and put it in the game. Anyway, the game's gimmick was that it had this 8-player mode where two people would each hold the side of GameCube controller. It seemed like a decent idea, but if you're playing Mario Party, I don't know how you would possibly find 7 other people to play. Seriously, who the fuck has 7 friends that all want to play Mario Party and want to share controllers? The game also brought back the microphone from the 6th game. I found it in my closet, I hope it still works. 3 Circle Square Holy shit, this thing works better than Siri! Siri, take a note, the Mario Party microphone actually works pretty damn well! Sorry, I didn't get that. God damn it. Other than that, this Mario Party didn't have much else to offer. Everything else was pretty basic, you can skip this one. Number 5 There's something that just can't be redone about the original Mario Party. This is where it all started. The first Mario Party game released back in 1998, and at the time, nothing room friendships like this did. The game started only 6 characters, Luigi, Wario, Donkey Kong, Mario, Princess Peach, and Yoshi. And the plot, if you can call it that, revolved around all of them arguing over who is the biggest superstar. The game introduced the basic premise of what Mario Party is, collecting as many coins as you can so you can spend them on stars and become the superstar. The original Mario Party is just filled with so much nostalgia and wonder. The minigames were all pretty amazing, and the boards were simple but fun, although there was this bullshit space that could really just ruin your whole day if anyone landed on it. It pretty much just said, hey you know all that stuff you've been collecting? Well now it's someone else's. An issue with the game however, was that some of the minigames had the player rotate the analog stick as fast as they could, and most people such as myself found it easier to use the palm of their hands to do this. This led to many blistered hands and complaining parents, and as compensation, Nintendo sent gloves to anyone who complained to the company. But Nintendo didn't actually factor in what this did to their controllers. This green one I had as a kid is ruined because of those goddamn minigames. The stick just doesn't bounce back anymore. Regardless of this, however, the game was still pretty amazing. There was so much to find. Every track of music in the game was available to listen to in a jukebox in the settings, which is an actual location in the game, not just in a menu. You could buy new maps with stars, and there was even this toy fly guy that you could wind up and see how far you could get across the room. Here we go, this thing is gonna go so far! And although it had its flaws, we wouldn't have any other Mario Parties without it. Number 4 I went back to this Mario Party remembering nothing about it except for it being awesome. And boy was I right. Jesus, 2007. This is quite possibly the last great Mario Party. The game was the first to add the microphone attachment, and just like in the 7th, it worked really well in this one too. The game also had this day and night cycle for every game board that changed the repetitive gameplay for the better, such as making stars cheaper during the night. And the boards themselves were actually great, they felt so fresh. The minigames were also really good in this one. Honestly, there's just not much to say about it. This was just a really great Mario Party. Number 3 
Now this is personally my favorite Mario Party in the series. Maybe it's just a nostalgia thing, but there's just so much good stuff in here. The minigames are all fantastic, the boards are all fun, and the cast of characters was perfect. You had the original six plus Daisy and Waluigi. And who doesn't love Waluigi? But that's not to say it's not without its flaws. This is what I would call the tipping point for Mario Party. By now it didn't have that Call of Duty syndrome where one pops up almost every year. It was the first game on a new generation of console, the GameCube. I remember getting it as a kid and noticing the drastic difference in graphics compared to the games on the N64. Watching Donkey Kong here hump the air in a crisp 480p? Ugh, oh, all the more satisfying. This was also the first game where they started adding gimmicks. Mainly the Mega and Mini Mushrooms. The boards had these spaces that were just layered all over them. The odds were that you were going to land on one, and when you did, it was pretty much just random if you were going to get a big or small mushroom. Aside from that, I found this Mario Party to be just fantastic. These Bowser minigames were also some of the best. In this one, Bowser gives you a list of fruit he wants to eat. If you bring him the wrong one, you get singed. But not before he looks at you with those judging eyes. Holy Jesus! What is that? What the fuck is that? And the cute story mode where you get to see your character look by the constellation of themselves at the end, which is such a nice addition. Number 2! Mario Party 2 essentially improved on everything the original Mario Party was. It removed all the control ruining minigames and introduced more innovative ones. It even brought back the best ones from Mario Party 1. The maps in this game were also some of the most memorable, with each being differently themed, and even giving your character a specific costume for it too. This was also where they added the new item system that actually worked really well. Instead of hoarding your coins, you could now spend them on things like mushrooms, boo bells, and skeleton keys, if that's what you're into. The game was no longer based purely on luck, and you could now directly influence the board gameplay. The genie lamps were always my favorite, oh man they were awesome. 30 coins, but they brought you straight to the star, and you felt like you earned it too because of all the cash you just unloaded. This is what the first Mario Party game should have been. Not to say the first isn't amazing, I actually prefer it more, but in general, this is just a better game. It was probably the most solid entry in the series overall, and definitely one of the most memorable Mario Parties out there. Number 1 This is it, the best Mario Party in my opinion, Mario Party 3. This game was phenomenal. It capitalized on the best things about the first two games, and it learned from their mistakes. This Mario Party added two more characters to the roster for the first time in the series, Daisy and Waluigi. And they also added this neat story mode that went along with it. One by one you had to battle each character on a separate board, obtaining stance from them along the way. Considering Mario Party has barely ever had any story to begin with, this was a great addition. This game also now allowed you to store up to three items in your inventory as opposed to one. Sorry, Skeleton Key. I need to make room for something more important. Jeez, that's depressing. I said I was sorry. There was also this new third mode that was added to the game, where you and another player would face off on a dual board. In it, you and your rival are each given a partner that fights and defends for you. This mode wasn't all that much fun to play, but a neat addition to the game, as well as the first time the series started trying new things. But all of that is essentially irrelevant. The thing that really matters in Mario Party is the minigames. And oh god, the minigames were damn near perfect. Just watch this montage of amazingness I threw together. Was that amazing or what? Of course it was. But in all honesty, aside from the dual mode being kind of dull, I have nothing bad to say about this game. It is the most fun that can be had from any Mario Party game. And that's why it earns the number one spot on my list of the 10 best Mario Party games. Now remember that this is all based on my personal preference. I played the original Mario Parties when I was growing up, so I may be more biased towards them. That's not to say the newer games aren't any good, because they are, except Mario Party 9. Fuck this game. But that being said, maybe I'm wrong, maybe you think Mario Party 3 shouldn't be number one on this list. Well I want you to tell me, tell me in the comments below what order you would have picked from worst to best. Thank you for sticking it out to the end, that was like 15 minutes long, I don't know how you did it, but thank you. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Until then, I'm going to go play something other than Mario Party.